Hi everyone, it's Mo from Mo Goes and I'm back again with another video. I'm headed to Port Canaveral, Florida with the family to embark on a long awaited cruise adventure. Welcome to Royal Caribbean Adventure of the Seas, part one. Port Canaveral is roughly about a 45 minute drive from Orlando proper, so it's a pretty easy commute. This was a nine day, eight night cruise with four ports of call. The first one was originally to Labadee, Haiti, but due to all the recent unrest in the country, the itinerary was quickly changed. Instead, we were headed to Grand Turk, Turks and Caicos, Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, and St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Now, remember I said this video was part one, and there's a reason for that. Because this was such a long cruise, it would have been too long of a video if I crammed everything in that I wanted to highlight. So multiple shorter videos gives me a way to focus on specific topics that will be the most interesting and relevant to those considering a cruise like this in the future. Saturday was our first of three sea days. It was pretty uneventful, so we're gonna jump right into all the action on Sunday. We started the morning at Windjammer for breakfast and then we headed out onto one of the upper decks to take a look at the beautiful view of Grand Turk. By 9.45, we were off the ship headed to the cruise port to do a little exploring. Grand Turk Cruise Port is a great way to spend time off of the ship if you don't want to do any excursions. It's a well-planned and beautifully landscaped property that has everything you need for travel, comfort, and convenience. There's a lot of shopping, a few restaurants, guest services, and historic artifacts to check out. The beaches are picturesque and well-equipped with ample seating, shade from palm trees, and plenty of water activities to keep the entire family busy. I promise you this place has no shortage of gorgeous backdrops for capturing content. I literally could have stayed here all day with my camera. One thing I noticed immediately is how laid back Grand Turk Cruise Port is. There were no pushy cab drivers and tour guides trying to hustle two hour island tours. If you wanted to do a tour or an excursion, you actually walk up to an organized kiosk like this one with rainbow tours. They were offering a three hour open air bus tour with multiple stops around the island and we paid $75 for the three of us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Austin, and I work with Rainbow Tours, and I'm going to take you around there to the driver. But I'm bad at knowing this brown sexy chocolate, baby. We're going to have a good time here today. Now, if we have special needs, we're going to board you first. You're going to follow me first. We have lots of more seats than people. You can sit with your friends and your family. If you need a second row, it's not a problem. We have rows of five. We like to sit you in rows of four. So if you have more than that, you can sit right in the immediate back. Do not rush. Please sit with your friends and family and let Austin board you. And then you're gonna meet the tour guide, all right? So special needs are gonna follow me and everybody else gonna follow me afterwards, okay? We're gonna come this way here, excuse me, please. Austin actually ended up being our tour guide, so if you're in Grand Turk and you plan to do a tour with Rainbow Tours, definitely ask for Austin. He was phenomenal. And I say that because he truly knows his island. From the moment we drove off, Austin hit us with facts on facts on facts. And that's one thing that you want when you're doing a historic tour like this. You wanna learn as much as you possibly can. And we learned so much. There was just too much information for me to go into detail, but trust me, if you take this tour, you will not regret it. Another thing that I loved about this tour is the fact that we were in an open air bus. I've been on many tours before where we were in a closed charter bus or open trolleys or an open bus like this. This is the best way to experience a tour or a historic tour, any kind of tour for that matter, because it keeps you connected with your surroundings. It allows you to capture pictures and video footage a lot easier without the barrier of glass. And it's, it's just a really nice experience. 
Our first stop of the tour brought us to Front Street, which is a small little shopping area that had a few quaint shops, restaurants, and there was also a beachfront. If you know anything about good, authentic Caribbean food, you want to go where the locals go. So we found this spot called Barbie's Restaurant, and sadly, we didn't have much time left to hang around, so we weren't able to order anything, and with what time we had left, we decided to just walk around, enjoy the sights, and check out the scenery at the beach area. Hello. Put you on the horse today. It's ten bucks. Thank you. Not long after, we were back on the bus at our second stop, where Austin got off to give us a little background history on Grand Turk and the donkeys that are literally everywhere. Donkeys to Grand Turk are like rats and pigeons to New York City, basically. Remember, Royal Caribbean does not sail to Turks and Caicos, so this last minute change in ports gave us the rare opportunity to sail to a country that we've always wanted to visit on our favorite cruise line. You may not find another Royal Caribbean cruise sailing the Grand Turks in the future. Welcome to Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic, our second port of call on our Caribbean cruise. Our day started super early and we headed out towards Taino Bay cruise port. This was our very first time visiting the Dominican Republic, so we were very excited about being here. Once we were all checked in, the tour guide led the group through the port to the buses. This was a four hour historic tour of the city with Carib tours booked directly through Royal Caribbean. The price can vary from cruise to cruise, but it was just under $220 for the three of us. Half of the tour was spent touring the city on an air conditioned charter bus, while the other half was spent on foot walking to and from different points of interest, including a rum tasting, coffee and chocolate tasting, and two museums, just to name a few. One of the stops on the walking tour led us to a park with a couple of monuments dedicated to two of the founding fathers of the Dominican Republic, Juan Pablo Duarte and Gregorio Luperón. Our tour guide, Andy, was awesome. He shared so many facts about the founding of the country, about the culture, religion, the architecture, and historic landmarks throughout the city, including this church, San Felipe Cathedral. We continued our walk through the city along narrow and cobblestone or brick streets with the most beautiful murals, and we stopped at a couple of touristy places of interest. We ended up at the intersection of San Felipe and Belen, where you'll find this cute little pedestrian-friendly street full of beautiful rainbow-colored umbrellas, a lot of little mom-and-pop shops, including this one called Rincon Cafe, a family-owned specialty coffee and chocolate store. We were able to sample a couple of their offerings, including this delicious hazelnut flavored hot chocolate. I could not leave without a bag of this. It was so good. They had so many other flavors, but it was a little bit too overwhelming. So I just got what I sampled, did a little bit more browsing and just walked around and took in all the sights and sounds of the store. I bet you can imagine how good it must have smelled in this cafe, ugh. Our next stop was just around the corner where we learned a lot about the local amber. As Andy told you, I'm gonna explain a little more about our national stone. 
First of all, I'm going to start with these ones. He told you this is called Latimar. Latimar is the traditional stone from the Dominican Republic. There is only one mine in all the world, and it's here in the Dominican Republic. But look something different and very interesting about that. In the country, with the same weather, with the same beach, the same seas, there is only one place that we can find this rock, and that's made it more interesting for us. And it's in the town of Barahona. Right now, we are in Puerto Plata in the north, and we need to travel to like six hours to the southwest of the island, but we can get the Latimar. This place pretty much sold everything that you can think of except t-shirts. They had different kinds of jewelry at different price points, lots of trinkets, and they even had samples of this locally known specialty drink called Guanamama. I tasted it and it was pretty good. It was like a slightly alcoholic grape juice. We were back on the bus again for a short trip to a little museum called the Amber Museum. Did you notice anything familiar about that logo? If you did, keep that in the back of your mind because we'll talk about it later. First off, let's talk about the building itself. It's a Victorian style two-story building that houses the Amber Museum. And it's right here where you'll find the largest collection of amber in the entire world. Inside, we saw many unique pieces of amber, some of which had insects or tiny vertebrates in them. There were lots of other types of gemstones and all kinds of jewelry. As you can see, it's big, but it's not as heavy as you may think. This is why amber floats in salt water because of this density. Mm -hmm. Notice the color change to blue when the ultraviolet light is shined on it. That's how you can tell a real authentic piece of amber. We made our way to the lower level of the museum where we found an area dedicated to tobacco. We learned how tobacco was grown, how it's stored, harvested, and let me tell you, the smell hits you like a ton of bricks. Thankfully, that part of the tour was pretty short, so it wasn't that much longer before we were headed out into fresh air. Now about the museum logo, have you figured out yet what it reminds you of? It looks just like the Jurassic Park movie logo, right? Well, according to the museum guide, Steven Spielberg, the producer of Jurassic Park, was inspired by this museum. So much so that the famous piece of large amber with a mosquito inside came from this museum. And in return for the use of that piece of amber for the movie, the family who originally owned and started this museum asked only that they were able to use the likeness of the logo of the movie for their own museum. And there you have it. And again, this information comes directly from the museum tour guide. Let me know in the comments if you've heard this story elsewhere. We were back on the bus for a little more sightseeing and eventually we ended up at another museum, the Duarte House Museum. Remember I mentioned earlier in the video that Juan Pablo Duarte was one of the founding fathers of the Dominican Republic and he was actually born in this house in January of 1813. The tour guide gave us a really great overview of what life was like in that era, what they ate, what they used to cook with and how they dressed. Carib Tours made sure to save the best for last. The last stop on the tour was to the McCorrick's House of Rum for some rum tasting. Right out front, you can jump in the back seat of one of these classic drop tops for a cruise around the city for a fee. So today we're going to do the process that we made the wrong in the factory both in our museum. So now we're going to pass our AG warehouse. So please wash your step because inside when I close the door, it's a little bit dark. You can take pictures or no flash and you can always smoke inside. Everybody ready? 
correction, it was very dark and it felt like we were in an Indiana Jones movie. We ended up watching a short film about the history of the company and then we were led into what I call the party room because that's where they passed out six different rum samples, of course one at a time, but I can only do three, I was done after three. Sorry not sorry, I'm a proud lightweight. Well, the rum tasting was the last segment of the tour and then we headed back to Taino Bay where we spent the rest of our time until it was time to board the ship. Taino Bay is such a beautiful cruise port. It's so well laid out. It looks like a beautiful, lush tropical getaway. It's vibrant, active, yet laid back and there's no shortage of things to do. So if your cruise stops here, it's definitely worth checking out. I hope this video left you with great insight on Grand Turk and Puerto Plata. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Make sure you stay tuned for part two. Until the next one, see ya.